figure, we find how much is needed to fill that object. To help us find the volume of our cone, we're going to compare it to the cylinder with the same dimensions. Both have a radius of 4 centimeters and both have a height of 8 centimeters. We know how to find the volume of a cylinder. Volume is pi times radius squared. So 3.14 times 4 squared times 8. 4 squared is 16, so 3.14 times 16 times 8. 3.14 times 60 gives us 50.24, then multiply that by 8, and the volume of our entire cylinder comes out to be 401 and 92 hundredths cubic centimeters. Now when we compare that to the cone, we can see that the cone is only going to take up a fraction of the cylinder. The question is, what fraction of the cylinder's volume is it going to take up? We've filled our cone once, and we're going to pour it into the cylinder. We can see the volume of our cone fills only a small portion of the cylinder. We'll fill our cone a second time and go ahead and pour that into our cylinder. We can see there's still some space left. We'll fill our cone a third time and pour it into our cylinder also. We can see that the third pour from our cone pretty much fills the entire volume of our cylinder. Since it took us three pours from the cone to fill the cylinder, that tells us the volume of the cylinder is three times greater than the volume of the cone. However, we're looking for the volume of the cone, so let's take the reciprocal of that. The volume of the cone is going to be one-third the volume of the cylinder. Well, we know the volume of the cylinder is 401 and 92 hundredths cubic centimeters, so we're going to take one-third of that. That tells us the volume of our cone is 133 and 97 hundredths cubic centimeters. Corresponding cylinders and cones follow the same relationship as corresponding prisms and pyramids. This means the volume of our cone is one-third big BH, area of our base times our height. In this case, our base is a circle. So most specifically, the equation for volume of a cone would be one-third pi times radius squared multiplied by the height. Let's use our equation to go ahead and find the volume of our cone. We found the volume of the cone is one-third the volume of the corresponding cylinder with the same dimensions. Our volume is one-third times pi times radius squared times height. Well, on our cone, they told us diameter. So first thing we have to do is find the radius. Radius is always half the diameter. Here, we're going to need to take 10 divided by 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5, so on this cone, our radius is 5 centimeters. Now we can substitute that into our equation. So volume is going to be one-third times 3.14 times 5 squared for our radius times 15 for the height of our cone. Order of operations tells that we need to do exponents first. So we have 1 third times 3.14 times 25 times 15. Now we know we can multiply in any order, but in this case, instead of going left to right, we're going to do the 3.14 times 25 times 15 first. In other words, we're going to find that corresponding cylinder part first and then pick up the 1 third. So 3.14 times 25 times 15 comes out to be 1,177 and 5 tenths. That would be the volume of the entire cylinder. So the cone is going to be one third of that. So here we can multiply by one third and when we do that comes out to be 392 and 5 tenths. This is labeled in centimeters so this is also labeled in centimeters to the third power. So volume of this cone comes out to be 392 and 5 tenths cubic centimeters.